you follow Tail Chow on Twitter, T A I L C H A O, he is the designer and creator of this game, and he put together a beautiful, authentic looking Atari 7800 box. Exactly the old style of Atari 7800 games. And now, let's very carefully open this top flap of the box so I can show you how complete this presentation is because Tail Chow did a wonderful job with this. He didn't just create an authentic looking box for his homebrew game, which I will be showing you gameplay footage of here in a little bit. He created the full package, an instruction manual, a nice looking cartridge, a warranty card. Yeah, the man did not slack off in any part of this presentation. Look at this beautiful orange cartridge. This will stand out in your Atari 7800 collection, and it should because there is an extra chip in here. Much like Pitfall 2 had an extra chip so it could play a soundtrack. This makes this Atari 7800 game on par with any Nintendo game of the era and shows that if Atari had really gotten behind the 7800, it could have competed very well. There is a Miseryland tour guide, which doubles as the instruction manual. More on that in just a second. First, I'll show you the rest of the contents here, including a nice little sticker that he included in the package. This character is named Dutt, a warranty card as mentioned. Now back to the instruction manual, which is printed in color, which is another very nice touch. This is not black and white. There is a lot of quality put into this cartridge box manual just complete package to make it feel like a glorious old game the only thing missing is shrink wrap around the outside of the box but i'm actually happy there's none because that would have taken longer to open and shrink wrap often damages these boxes when it gets shrunk too tight especially as it ages over time if you have old complete new in box games you might want to consider unsealing them before the shrink wrap completely crushes your box now as you'll see here my cat tingo decided to be a cutie and start rubbing his face on my console and my controllers the moment i got everything set up to test this game and here it is <laughs> I hope by now you're catching on to the fact that Ricky and Vicky is a truly unique Atari 7800 game. This looks like something that could have come out from Capcom back in the day. This is that quality of a video game. Now, each one of these screens is a little bit of a puzzle to solve because you can actually fall through one side and come back out the top again. So each time, you have to collect all the keys in the room and you can either do this individually or as a team with another player using the second controller in port 2. Right now, I don't have a second controller plugged in, so nobody else is playing. It's just me. I have to solve the puzzle in each room by myself, but my partner will still appear in each level as I progress. 
Now, they've added different things to each room to make it more of a puzzle, such as these blocks that you can pick up, attach to walls, and then they fall down after a little while. So you have to use them quick before they fall out of place, but you can use them to create platforms to jump to specific areas. And in some of these rooms, as you'll see in a little bit, you'll also need those blocks as a weapon. And if you're playing as a tag team, you can actually use them tossed back and forth between your partner or with your partner standing on them to reach previously inaccessible areas. So there are many different options for how you can play Ricky and Vicky. And by the way, this isn't just an Atari 7800 homebrew, although that's mainly the reason I wanted it. This game is also available on Steam, so if you want to play it that way, if you don't have an Atari 7800, you're not left out of the fun here. You can get in on the Ricky and Vicky action by ordering it through Steam. To find out more about that, go to the Penguin Net website, which you can find linked in Tail Chow's description on Twitter. Again, that's T-A-I-L-C-H-A-O. Tail Chow is the man you want to get in touch with if you want to get a copy of this game. Now, it looks like Vicky is caught in an endless loop on the waterfall there. Too bad for her, I'm afraid, but Ricky is just fine over here on the right, although he still has to get all of the keys for the two of them to get out of this room and progress to the next area. And as you can see, there is a timer at the top, and if that timer runs out, you lose a life. So there is a certain amount of you want to complete this as fast as you can, not just for the points, but because you don't want to run out of lives. Now, as you can see here, we've got some rabbit foremen wearing some very Mega Man style hard hats. They look a little bit like the Mets from that game. And you can throw the blocks at them from any direction to knock them down. You can throw the blocks up or you can throw the blocks horizontally. Either way, once you knock them down, they're out of your way. There's very nice animation detail to both the characters and the enemies. Again, the quality of this presentation cannot be understated. The graphics, the music, the animation, the style, everything here is just a complete package. This is one of the best presented homebrews that I've seen on any system, not just Atari 7800, but in general. To close out this presentation, I decided to go back and show you a little more of the title screen, which shows Ricky and Vicky working together as a team, tossing a block back and forth, and then they'll use it to jump to a higher area by standing on it and tossing it at the same time. There are very innovative ways to use the blocks in this game. I can't recommend it more highly, and I don't have any more footage of the game, so I thought I would add a little bonus footage at the end of my cat, Tingo, deciding to be cute. I had come to the back of the game room to test out a Nintendo Wii game, but he immediately jumped into my lap and made himself the star of the show. He would not get down, and I didn't want him to get down because I enjoy giving him some quality scritches, some lovin', and he shows it right back in return because when he gets really happy, he starts licking my hand. And you'd think that I ate a can of tuna by the way he's going to town on it, but I did no such thing. In fact, I had washed my hands before I set up the Atari 7800, so I was clean, but he still felt the need to clean me up anyway. This is Mr. Mega Man Fan saying goodbye until next time, and I hope you enjoyed this look at Ricky and Vicky.